Hey everyone, and welcome back to the next part of our mini series here at Granite on ACT calculator hacks. Today we are going to talk about all the hacks that you can use to solve questions on the ACT about imaginary numbers. These questions often pop up towards the end of the test. They're often some of the harder questions on this test, but the cool thing is if you use your TI-84, TI-83, TI-89 calculator properly, they're absurdly easy. It's just so easy. There's really no reason to even bother putting any effort into them. You can do them in two seconds with your calculator. And I'm going to show you four or five questions here straight out of the ACT and how they work. So let's get started. So here's our first question. Given that i is the imaginary unit, which of the following complex numbers is equal to 7 plus 6i squared? So to solve this question, I just want to jump right back over here to my TI-84 calculator. Now, it looks a lot like this in real life. I've got it on my computer here as well so that you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. But just looking back at that question, right, we have 7 plus 6i all of that squared. So all I'm going to do is actually just put that right in my calculator. I need to do those parentheses. Never forget those. And we're going to talk more about those parentheses as we go along. But 7 plus 6. Now here's that I button. It's second and then down here near the period. That's I, right? And you can see, if you want to follow along down at the bottom of my screen here, you can see all the keys that I'm pressing. I want to close that parentheses off. Now I want to put a little squared here. And then if I hit enter, we're going to see 13 plus 84i is our answer. And sure enough, we can go back to the question and see 13 plus 84i, that's h. And sure enough, h is our answer. And on to our next question here. So this one is going to feel similar to the last one, but we're going to have a little bit of an extra trick I want to show you, something else that I think is really useful here. And if you've watched some of our other calculator hacks videos, you might be familiar with this one. You might be able to guess what we're going to do, but let me just show you and we'll get into it here. So, so again, to solve this problem, we just go right over to our calculator, right? And we say, we know it's going to be two and then minus second, use that second button. And then the period here, second period is I, and then we can just divide it by negative. We want to say a negative three, make sure not to use the minus sign here. It, it'll yell at you if you do this. Negative three plus i. So that second period again is i. And all we got to do is hit enter and boom. Now we've got negative 0.7 plus positive um, 0.1 i. Now, Here's the little trick I said I was going to tell you about. If we look back at our answers, right, they're all fractions. However, here we don't have fractions. Help, what do we do? But there's this useful thing. If you go to math, frac, hit enter, see this ands? This means take the answer that I previously got and turn it into fraction form. So take my answer and make it into a fraction. And boom, we've got fractions. So negative 7 over 10 plus 1 over 10 i. We can go check our answers here. And there we go. K looks about right. That's awesome for us. Okay, so let's solve another one here and see, see how this works. So if i is equal to the square root of negative 1, and let me pause here and give you guys, we've seen i written in a lot of different ways. We've seen i squared equals negative one. We've seen i is equal to the square root of negative one. We've seen it referred to as a complex unit or the imaginary unit. Ultimately, for our calculators to solve these questions easily and well, all we need to know is i is that button on our calculator. And we, you can say as well that i is equal to the square root of negative one or that it's i squared is equal to negative one. Or we could say all of these sort of things. Ultimately, however, for our calculator, we don't have to get too bent out of shape about this. But we want to know what is i plus i squared plus i cubed divided by i cubed plus i to the fourth plus i to the fifth. So again, let's just jump right into our calculator. You're probably getting pretty comfortable with this at this point. We're going to say, put it in parentheses, right? Remember, when we do these fractions, fractions always have to have the whole top needs to be in parentheses and the whole bottom needs to be in parentheses. So let's just go ahead and say i, and we're going to add it to i squared. So i 
and that's squared. And then we're going to just add that down. Oh, oops, be careful of that. We want to jump down out. <laughs> we need to get out of our, there we go. See, I just used that side arrow to get out of that, um, out of the, the squared, out of that exponent. And we're going to go, here we go, I, and we're going to go up to the third. Now, remember again, if I just keep typing, it's going to be stuck up here if I try and put something in. So we want to make sure to always use this arrow to the side here. Oops, let's go back one. Let's delete this little thing. Do the side arrow. Now I'm here. We can close our parentheses, right? We do our division sign. This shows that everything on the top here is in parentheses and everything at the bottom here is going to be in parentheses as well. So we're gonna say it's gonna be i to the third. That's pretty good. And we're gonna go over here and we're gonna do plus. And what do we wanna do again? i to the fourth looks pretty good. And we're gonna go over one more and we're gonna go, here we go, i to the fifth. And close that out. Oh, I made that mistake again. Let's let's go here, skip over, close out the parentheses. Now we've got a nice looking expression to work with. And all we have to do is hit enter. And we see we have this thing here. We have negative one plus zero i. So that's a little different from what we might have seen in the past. And again, I wanted to make sure that we feel comfortable with this. If you have any number times zero, it's zero, right? So what is this essentially equal to? What is negative one plus zero i? It's just equal to negative one. Makes sense. So again, we go over to our answers and we choose B. Sure enough, that's perfect. And let's just keep moving along to our next question here. Given a positive integer n such that i to the n is equal to 1, which of the following statements about n must be true? Again, they're giving us this note. They're saying it a million different ways. i squared is equal to negative 1. We have that when n is divided by 4, the remainder is 0. When n is divided by 4, the remainder is 1, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, on and on and on. So this is a little different because we're not just solving an algebraic statement. We're kind of inferring a little extra here. But I want to know basically what happens when I put some kind of factor of 4 in. So if I just say, let's just go ahead and see what happens if I do i to the 4. i to the 4th power. Okay, it's that thing again that we got. It's 1 plus 0i. So it's 1, right? Well, let's try it again. Let's say if we do another factor of 4. Let's say i to the 4th. Sorry, i to the eighth. Same thing. Okay, let's try one more just to make sure we know what we're what we got going on here. Let's say to the to the twelve. It's the same thing again. When we do i to any multiple of four, we're getting one. So that means essentially, when n is divided by four, the remainder is always going to be zero, right? If we use four, eight, twelve, sixteen, on and on and on, and we divide it by four. The remainder is always zero, and that will always give us something that equals one. And let's try, we're gonna do one more, one more last one here. This is, what is the product of the complex numbers? Again, using a different term here, but i is still the same. If you call it a complex number, imaginary number, all of that, it's, it's essentially going to be the same for us here on the ACT. But we wanna know what is the product of the complex numbers, negative three i plus four, and 3i plus 4. So let's just go over and do it, right? We're going to say negative, making sure we're using the negative sign here and not that minus sign that I got confused about earlier. So it's negative 3i, and then we're going to do plus 4. And we're going to multiply this times 3i plus 4. We can even take a couple guesses. Take a second and guess. Try and guess what you think it's going to be. And it's 24, sorry, 25 plus 0i. Remember, if it's 0i, there's no i's. It's essentially 0. So this thing is equal to 25. So if you thought the answer was C, you are absolutely correct. Great work. The biggest thing to remember, right, when we're using this calculator, if you use second and then the period sign, you get i. 
it's i. And you can use this in all of your algebraic calculations so that you can do these ACT imaginary number questions really easily. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about our ACT math section, make sure to check out the video right here, right here, on the top formulas that I see pop up on the ACT math section all the time. Those formulas will be super helpful so you know them, they're on the top of your head, and you can crush this test.